All right, boys and girls, we are breaking down UFC 262. Michael Chandler versus Charles Oliveira for the lightweight title. The electricity at the Toyota Center was absolutely awesome. Obviously, this is the main event, so everybody was there. You can see fans, fans who haven't seen live MMA action in almost a year because of the pandemic. So um, I felt like I was right where I needed to be. I felt like I was right where I was supposed to be. I felt like every single road over the last 21 years had led me to this opportunity, had led me to this UFC title fight. To really get to size them up as we're both uh, you know, shoeless, got the gloves on. That's exactly what I envisioned, exactly what I visualized. Yellow shorts, blondish, dyed hair. Here I am about to get into my crouched position, ready for that bell to ring. And right away, we want to take the center of the octagon right away. Um, I think Charles Oliveira and myself are both that guy, the guy who wants to take the center of the octagon. So I wanted to beat him to the center, and I do. First guy to the monster logo. Um, he starts throwing kicks, opens up with the knees. That low calf kick he threw right away, um, we knew it was something he was probably going to start throwing. So right away, I want to start putting heat on him. Um, as you saw there, going right hand to the body and we're finishing up, uh, following up with some hooks. So we just wanted to back him up, wanted to get in his face, this right hand, right hand to the body, left hook here, boom. So we step through. So very similar to the way that I finished in Hooker. The first one I throw missed by an inch or so, but it was a winger. We won it hard. Hit him with this first combination. This is where I cut him open. This guillotine kind of came out of necessity. Um, you know, obviously I didn't, I don't jump for guillotines, but it kind of came out of necessity because he got in on a shot as I was coming in, and I didn't really feel like it was very tight, so I let it go. Tried to tried to bounce him over or tried to roll him over. Didn't really work out. And even in here, I felt like I was going to be able to move him. I did, and this right here, a lot of people said was ill-advised. Um, everybody said you should never give Charles Oliveira your back. I do agree. I think Charles Oliveira is one of the greatest grapplers in the world on the ground, but I get to this position a lot. This is how I wrestle out. I give my back. I go to turtle. I get hand control. And even with a guy as dangerous as Charles Oliveira, even with a guy as controlling as Charles Oliveira and well-versed in the submission department as he is, I still felt comfortable right here. Hands are up. Neck is tucked, chin is tucked. He goes for a, kind of a body lock there and he starts going over top. I get the two on one. As you can see, the blood's flowing. This is where we do the infamous slam, slam to back. Um, also ill-advised, but entertaining. You know, uh, win, lose, or draw. I've never been in a, in a uh, boring fight, but even right here, I knew kind of getting the slam was gonna give me the opportunity to get the, that one on one. And as you see, I never, I never try to let go of the wrist. And as soon as, as soon as I get it, I try to keep that wrist with uh, all of my might. Lock it up with both hands. Um, he lands a decent elbow there. He's trying to land some strikes, going to the body, going to the head. But I'm just buying my time waiting because I know even though he has that figure four on my body, when I get that two on one and I can extend it, that's when I can explode, turn my hips, get chest to chest with him and get on top of him. Get the two on one, scoot the hips out a little bit and then we make that, that move. Gotta worry about the up kicks, he's long. He's hit a couple people with up kicks. He's actually hurt some people with up kicks. So we were, we were aware of that, throw some kicks. Kind of just buying time, still getting the bearings but also keeping the pressure on him, showing that kind of dominant position on top of him. Let him up and we throw the big right hand. Now here's where we get right back into his face. Hit him with the jab body hook and this right hand bang on the top of the temple this right here is probably the hardest part of this entire fight to watch because Charles Oliveira is essentially almost out here um, you know it's one of those deals where if I maybe stop punching him he is out and I think I wake him back up by punching him again but we threw the hook and chase him down right hand to the temple he drops bang bang um, just landing shots right there. He almost looks like he's out, goes back to pulling guard. And here's where, you know, the age old question of should you let him up? Should you just let him back to the feet? I think the right decision here could have been to let him up or the right decision here could have been to just be in his guard and finish him with strikes like I have numerous people in the past. Um, there's a lot of times where guys wilt underneath my pressure. Um, but I think the big thing also to be taken away here is even though Charles Oliveira is hurt, every single submission that he throws up is pretty uh, 
pretty far away from even coming close. And I think that's just a testament to my anti-jujitsu style, the wrestling style. I'm short, I'm shorter, I'm strong, I'm compact. Um, I'm able to keep my, my chin tucked, able to keep my neck tucked, keep my limbs close to me and do as much damage. So we, we were about a, a minute 20, minute 30 here on the ground where I could just do some damage, landed a couple decent elbows. I think I landed a decent elbow here. This is about the only spot where I thought, okay, well, this is now worthless because he's tied me up and he's held on to me. You know, do damage constantly, constantly trying to fight, constantly trying to move forward, but you also, you know, just start settling in for the next round, realizing, okay, this round is gonna end, we're gonna go into a new round, walk back to the wrong corner, that's the red corner, go back to the blue corner. <laughs> um, so, confidence sky high going into the second round. Got a nice little black guy, and we're about 19 seconds away from this fight ending. So I think Charles Oliveira also read, when I go to that body, I, I kind of left my hand down. He catches me with a hook. And here, here you're just, uh, you know, the onslaught is happening. You're trying to get away from it, trying to get away from it. Dan Mergliata has no choice but to stop the fight. I'm, uh, I'm conscious, you know, not, I don't want to say conscious, like, I, like he shouldn't have stopped the fight. Um, I wasn't exactly there, but I wasn't knocked completely unconscious. I wasn't knocked out stiff. Here's the agony of defeat, the pain, where it starts to settle in, where you start to look around and you see all the, the facial expressions of the people. Um, you see a decent amount of them with you know disappointment. They wanted me to win. You see a, a decent amount of them who are happy that Charles won. But you know you see my dad there who's in my corner. You see Charles come over and you know, just a little sportsman show of sportsmanship. I don't really like these moments too much, you know. I would rather deal with my loss by myself than to have the guy who just beat me come over and, and talk to me, to be quite honest. Um, I don't really like to do that whenever I beat somebody, but it's, uh, you know, I try to handle it with class. I was coming out, coming out of the pocket. He lands a, a hook, drops me, and, uh, oh man. And that's my, that's my fault. I should have came up with the, the jab. I should have came up with the jab as a defense instead of throwing the right hand by itself. And Daniel Cormier, Joe Rogan, and John Anik are going bananas right now. But that's, uh, that's part of it. Um, and that was the night that I got my first crack at the UFC title. Next time we win it. But hats off to Charles Oliveira. Hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of the breakdown or at least getting into my brain, into my mind on uh, watching the fight itself. So, see you at the top.